Today, we'll look at Kit Service Registrations. Kit Service Registrations are a new feature coming with .NET 8 in November 2023. Up to .NET 7, the built-in dependency injection container stored three different things about a service registration. First, the lifetime. It defines how many times a service is created or reused. There are three lifetime options transient, scoped, and singleton. Second, the service type. It is the type we use when requesting a service implementation. For example, I inventory. Third, the implementation that is registered for the service type. For example, the inventory service. With .NET 8, the service descriptor interface responsible for representing a dependency injection registration got a new service key property. Most methods we can use to register a service dependency now support providing an optional service key. When we register a service using a key, we get a new way to identify the service when requesting it. Let's take a look at the following example. We define an iInventory service interface. The idea is that using the getStock method, we can ask for the stock of a given product. We have two different implementations. We have the cached inventory service that takes the information from a memory cache. We return five as the current stock to keep it simple. The second implementation, the live inventory service, accesses the database and returns a more current number. We return four to demonstrate that the value is more current. In the program.cs file of our web API application, we add two service registrations. First, we use the addKeyed singleton method to register the cached inventory service as the iInventory service type and provide cached as its key. Next, we register the live inventory service for the same interface and use live as its key. We now have two controllers handling different use cases. First, we have the product overview controller. It will be called whenever a user opens a product page. For this use case, we want to use the cached inventory service. Performance is more important than how current the information is. We use the iService provider interface and call the getRequiredKeyService method and provide the type of the service interface and the service key. Although there is a from key services attribute, I couldn't make constructor injection work at this time. However, it's possible that with the final release of .NET 8, it might be possible. I will keep you updated and upload a new video if there are any changes. The second use case is the checkout controller. When a user wants to purchase a product, it's more important to have the exact stock than how long it takes to load that information. Again, we use the iService provider interface and call the getRequiredKeyService method and provide the iInventory service as the type parameter. This time, we use live as the service key. Now, let's start the application and test the two use cases. Let's first execute the product overview API. We provide a product ID and execute the API. The response is a JSON containing a stock property with the value 5. Next, we want to execute the checkout API. Again, we provide a product ID and execute the API. The response this time is 4, meaning we use the live inventory service instead of the cached inventory service. More sophisticated dependency injection containers such as Autofac or Ninject have had key service registrations for a long time. I believe key service registrations in .NET 8 is a great new feature and it can be helpful in specific scenarios. Will it revolutionize our .NET applications? I don't think so. However, if you need it, it's there, it's another quality of life improvement with the next.NET iteration.
Don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more content about .NET development. And I will see you in the next video.